for the last time, Walt. Please let me go. Nuts. Then it has to be this way. Hap, no. Drop that gun. I'm sorry, Walt. Very sorry. I've known all along you had to die tonight. But I didn't know. I killed you. Midnight. The witching hour when the night is darkest. Our fears the strongest. And our strength at its lowest ebb. Midnight. When the graves gape open and death strikes. How? You'll learn the answer in just a minute in... The Man Who Died Yesterday. and Terror by Radio's Masters of the Macabre. Our story by William Morwood is The Man Who Died Yesterday. Afternoon on a little traveled highway. A strange looking man in threadbare clothes stands hopefully by the roadside. A car comes around the curve. Slows up. Stops. Looking for a lift? Are you headed for New York? That's me. Hop in. Thank you. It's very good of you. I... I'm in a hurry to reach New York. I haven't much time, you see. Yeah, sure. I picked you right off for a big executive on his way to a board meeting. Nothing like that. <laughs> it's just that... Oh, there's something terribly important I've got to do. A mission. Oh, Salvation Army, huh? No, United Nations. I have to see the Secretary General before midnight tonight. That leaves me only eight hours. The United... Are you feeling all right, pal? Yes. I was sick, but I'm feeling fine now. You don't look so good to me. Why does it go? Of course, you could do with a haircut, too. I suppose so. <laughs> I'm afraid I've been out of touch with civilization a long while. By the way, my name is rather was, David Hepgood. I am. I'm Walt Griggs. Can't you drive any faster, Walt? We've still got a long way to go, and... Well, I'm worried about this part of the road. There's going to be a rock slide and... Rock slide? Oh, you mean those signs? Ah, uh, it's nothing to worry about. They put them up on... What the... It's all right. Keep going, Walt. We got through safely. Yeah, but... There was a rock slide, just like you said. Of course. But... How did you know? I can see ahead, Walt. See into the future for 24 hours. The guy was nuts, of course, but... Still, what are the odds against calling a long shot like that? A million to one? A billion? I gave up trying to figure it. We drove along for about an hour and then stopped for gas. There was this hamburger joint right by... Where are we going, Walt? Grab a bite. Oh, but there isn't time. I've less than seven hours now, and by midnight We've I... have got to gas up anyway, and I'm hungry. Come on, Hep. Hi, fellas. Hello, sugar. Sit down, Hep. What'll it be, boy? Hamburger for me, sweetheart, with onions. What's yours, Hep? I... I'm not hungry. Oh, busy with your speech for the United Nations, huh? Well, I'll just read this racing form while you're thinking. Racing form? Sure, I play the G's all the time. Got some important dough on today's meet. Fifty bucks on Alistair to win in the sixth. Alistair? Yep. I'm afraid you'll lose your money, Walt. What? Don't kid me. Alistair's a hot favorite. It's going to be a walk away. Marble the third won that race. Marble? What are you nuts? He's a rank outsider. A hundred... What do you mean won the race? It hasn't been run yet. Hasn't it? I didn't know. Look, up. Wait a minute. Sweetheart. Yeah? You think you can get the races in the radio? Oh, sure. It's all tuned in. A lot of our customers like to listen. Oh, if we can't waste time like this. Who can think about a horse race? I can. Remember my 50 bucks. But... The great race. 
The crowd is going wild with excitement. They're around the bend now, coming into the straight. Alistair is out in front by two lanes. Uh -huh. The rest of the horses bunched. Alistair is going strong. Oh, boy, where's your marble half weight? Entering the last stretch now. It's a walk away for Alistair. Nice, eh? Four lanes ahead and no challenger. Wait a minute. Alistair stumbles. Carrying eight stride. He's down. What? The jockey's strong there, but Alistair is... The other horses have gone past. Number eight is out in front. Number eight. Marble the third. Marble the third. Marble the third. And Marble wins. Rio! Ah, uh, turn that thing That's off. That's one for the book, folks. The most extraordinary... I'll be... You knew it all the time, Ed. You knew Marble had to win. Of course. What we've got to go. Sure. Sure, Happ. Anything you say. You're the guy I've been waiting for all my life. I didn't need no more figuring to tell me Hap was a gold mine. And I had him first before anybody else could get their hooks into him. The only thing that worried me was the way he talked. All this about midnight, not having much time. I had to use him while I had him, even if it meant taking chances. So while we drove, I worked on a plan. Walt, we've left the New York road. The signs are pointing the other way. I know, I'm taking a shortcut through a town called Hassock. Hassock? Yeah. That name mean anything to you, Hap? Hassock? Think hard. Let me see. There's going to be a hold up there tonight at the factory. Two men involved. They steal the week's payroll, $10,000. Ten grand, huh? They get away with it? There's a chase, but they take off the police. Great. Couldn't be better. Why? Where the two men have. You and me. What? No, Walt, no, I'm not a criminal. And I have something else to do with what little time I have left. You're coming with me, Hap. Maybe this will convince you. The gun doesn't frighten me. Stop the car and let me out. I've got to get to New York. All right, look, I'll make a deal with you. You come with me on the stick-up and I'll drive you straight through to New York without stopping. Hey, on. But, but I can't, Walt. My message concerns the whole world. It's the only way you'll get to deliver it. Well, if it is the only way. All right. Now, there's something more I've got to tell you, Walt. What's that? We leave a dead man behind. It was dark when we hit town. I drove down the main street and onto the factory building beyond. It was all dark except for a light in the cashier's office. Happ and I went in. There was a guy sitting at a desk. Who? Who are you? What do you want? There's ten grand in that safe. This is a stick-up, brother. Y you're crazy. There's no ten... Open up. I'll do the talking. I, I warn you, men. You'll be caught with... Shut up and start turning that dial. All right. Well, I guess you win. Come on, come on. Snap into it. I'm doing the best I can. That's it. Now hand out those greenbacks. Come on, get a move on. Watch out, Walt. He's turning in an alarm. Oh, you double-crossed and rat. Oh. Hey. Oh. Hey. Oh. You. Is the guy that had to be killed, Hap? Yes. Okay, then step on it. The cops will be swarming around like flies. They're gaining on this wall. I can't go any faster. I'm down to the floorboards already. They'll start shooting soon. You sure we get away? There's no slip up? No. We get away all right. Good. <laughs> Where did they get you, Walt? I am. What do we do, Hap? Keep driving till we hit that bend in the road. Yeah? There's a clump of willows around the corner. Pull in there. Okay. Here goes. Start the lights. Off. No hurry. Get back to the New York road. I've less than three hours left. Okay, but i got to stop and see a doctor. A doctor? Sure, my arm. Oh, what's the matter, Hap? Uh, I'm afraid of that doctor. Something happens there that I don't understand. What is it? I don't know. It's something I should have explained before. I can see into the future for you, Walt, and for everyone else. But not for myself. You the doctor? What can I do for you? Oh, my arm. I had a little accident. I was cleaning my gun and went off. 
Come into my office. Okay. And this man? I just a friend of mine. Nothing the matter with him. I don't agree. Looks much sicker than you do. No, doctor, really. Your face, it's the color of... No, no, I'm all right. Believe me, please hurry with my friend. It'll only take a second. Just get my stethoscope. Look, let's quit kidding around, Doc. I'm the one that... Quiet. Hmm. Good. Good Lord. What's the matter, Doc? Why are you looking at him like that? But it's, it's impossible, of course, but there's no heartbeat. No. But, but that's impossible. If, if your heart wasn't beating, you'd be... Dead? Yes. I've been dead since yesterday at midnight. Staring at him, at the living corpse of the man who died yesterday, Walt and the doctor draw back in horror. Just who is David Hapgood? Perhaps we'll know when the clock strikes 12 for murder. And now, back to Murder at Midnight and The Man Who Died Yesterday. The goose pimples were standing out on me. Here I'd found the guy, been with him for hours, through a hole up in a killing. And now I was hearing from his own lips that he was dead. He gave me the creeps. I wanted to take it on the land, but instead I was froze to the floor. I heard the doc saying... You've been dead since yesterday? Yes, doctor. But that's, that's impossible. There must be some explanation, some obscure heart condition. There is an explanation, but not that kind. You see, I was cheated out of 24 hours at the time of my birth. Eh? And I'm just making up for it now. But how do you mean? This will sound fantastic to you, but nevertheless it's true. I was born on a ship crossing the international date line... I started coming into the world during the last moments of a Friday and finished up early on Sunday. So I skipped a whole day of my life. I've always been living 24 hours ahead of myself. But, but that's sheer... It's gospel, Doc. He can call the turn on anything like he was reading tomorrow's paper. Uh, I told you it would sound fantastic, Doctor. But it is true. When I realized it, I... Well, I tried not to use it for selfish ends. I wanted to help people. But I never could. People would never listen to me, believe me. Finally, I realized that there was no place for me in the world. That man wasn't meant to know the future. So I went away. Up into the woods. Uh, how long ago? About ten years ago. Away from civilization, it was easier. I still knew what was going to happen, of course. But with no way to communicate my knowledge, my conscience was at rest. That is, until last night. Last night? I had caught a cold. It developed into pneumonia. I was deathly sick. I couldn't breathe. And uh, lost consciousness. And then suddenly, at midnight, I was well. Quite well. Not a trace of my illness. I knew what had happened, of course. I was dead. Duh. But I still had my missing day to live. I knew I must use it for the benefit of mankind. How? Oh. There's something I know. Something that involves the fate of millions of people. Unless some action is taken within the next few hours. What action? What is... I'm sorry, but I can't tell you, Doctor. I can't tell anyone except the Secretary General of the United Nations. And I must reach him before midnight, before I'm really dead. It's getting on to ten o'clock. Now do you understand why I'm in such a hurry? I'll say, let's get going, Hap. Never mind about my arm. That can wait. No, listen to me, Hap. You can't leave. What? As far as you're being able to read the future is concerned, well, it doesn't matter whether I believe that or not. But that heart condition of yours, that's something unique in medical history. Now, you've got to let me take you to a hospital where it can be studied properly. Lay off that stuff. Now, I'll phone for an ambulance. Stay away from that phone. He's mine. Yours. But do you realize what this can mean to science? Don't student? give me that talk. You just want to grab him off for yourself. Why, nonsense. Stop it. Stop it, both of you. I don't belong to anyone. I'm not a specimen to be examined. I've got a mission to perform for all of civilization. I've got to get to the United Nations now, before... Now, now, no matter how you've been deluding yourself, young man, you're terribly sick. I'm going to phone the hospital... Okay, and... you asked for it. Oh, you... I must get away from here. Hap. Hap, come back here. Come back here. Okay, you're dead. It won't hurt you if you're not. Oh. Oh, 
Holy smoke. That bullet went right through you and only knocked you down. Let go of me, Walt. You try to run away, huh? I've got to get to New York. Nothing can stop You're me. coming with me, Hap. i got plans for us as long as you last. You've got your 10000 What more do you want? A chance to run it up to 100000 and we can do it. I know the police and you can call the cards. But there's no time. I'm figuring on only a couple of hours. That's plenty. Listen, Walt. I'm asking you for the last time. Let go. Do a decent thing for once in your life. I'm nuts. What I'm trying to do, it's for you as much for millions of others. I never gave a cuss about the others, and I'm not starting now. All right, Walt. Then it has to be this way. Half, drop that gun. Oh! I'm sorry, Walt. Very sorry. I've known all along that you had to die tonight. But I didn't know that I'd kill you. type, ain't you? Sorry? Oh, that's all right. I don't like fellas that gad too much. You know, it, it was nice of you to pick me up back there on the road. I was lonely. Besides, I, uh, well, I needed reassurance. How's that? You see, I've been out of touch with civilization for some time, and the people I've met today weren't inspiring. <laughs> You're a strange guy, do you know it? Am I? Yeah, I mean, the way you talk and look. You don't look quite real. Oh, now, now, don't get me wrong. I, I like you a lot. Oh, I'm glad. Well, for instance, we've been driving for nearly an hour now, and you haven't even made a pass at me once. I'm afraid that wouldn't do either of us much good. Yeah, but just the same, a girl appreciates a little thing like that. Incidentally, what's your name? You can call me Hap. Hi, Hap. I'm Hazel. How do you do? Well, I guess I ought to tell you something about myself. Well, I know a little already. Huh? You're going to New York to find your fiancé, aren't you? Yeah, a guy called... Hey, how'd you know that? You're going to look him up in the phone book and call. And then you're going to, uh, find out that he's married. What? Oh, you're kidding me. Jim wouldn't do a thing like that. He'd wait for me forever. He said he would, and... Hey, why are we stopping? Almost out of gas. Howdy, folks. Uh, fill her up as quickly as possible. Okay. Uh, how far to New York from here? Well, you ought to be at George Washington Bridge in about ten minutes. Fine. You folks hear about all the excitement on the highway? No, what happened? Well, the cops are looking for a crazy killer. Murdered three people. One was a stick-up, and the other two was a doctor and his own sidekick. Oh, what's he look like? Well, according to the radio, he's got, got a chalk white face, a mop of hair that looks like it hasn't been cut in weeks, no hat, and, uh, and... What's the matter, bud? What are you staring at? Your, your friend, I... I, I got to get something out of the office. I'll be back in a minute. He's going to phone the police. This is your chance to get out, Hazel. Oh, no. I'm staying with you, Hap. Now, you better get moving and keep moving. No sign we're being followed. We may make it yet. Are you frightened, Hazel? Being with me? I guess I should be, but I'm not. Thank you. Somehow I, I can't believe you're crazy. If you killed anyone, you knew what you were doing and you had a good reason. Thank you again. You don't know what that means to me. Have people always been scared of you, Hap? Most people. Till I met you. Why couldn't I have met you sooner, Hazel? Well, what's wrong with now? It's a little late. Not for me. You honestly mean that? Sure. Well, then perhaps it's going to be all right after all. Perhaps we'll meet again. What do you mean? I didn't mean to tell you this. Perhaps I shouldn't now. It may cause you pain. Go ahead. I can stand it. After you call Jim, your fiancé, and find that he's married, you start across the street in a daze. A taxi is driving too fast and... Uh... It got my number on it, huh? Yes, I'm sorry. And yet, in a way... Uh, what did that sign say, Hazel? Uh, uh, George Washington Bridge, two miles. Oh, I'm going to make it. There's still time. The Secretary General is in his home. But let me in when they hear my message. I'll have most of an hour with him. It's not quite 11 yet. 11? Hey, your watch must have stopped. What? Well, look, look, there's a clock in the building. Where? Up to the right, there. Three minutes of 12. 
Oh. Well, what's the matter, Hap? Oh, I can't make it. Oh, I've lost. Unless a telephone. There's still time for that. Well, why are you stopping here? There's no phone. In that house, the family's all in bed upstairs. There's a telephone in the parlor. But the door is sure to be locked. They've forgotten to latch the parlor window. Hey, how do you know all these things? Never mind now. Goodbye, Hayes. But I'll be waiting here. No, you better start down the road. The police mustn't find you. But when you come back, I'll be here. I won't be back, Hazel. This is goodbye. For keeps. But you've got to come back. You've got to. Operator, get me the Secretary General of the United Nations at his home. Hurry, please, it's urgent. Hello? The Secretary General, please, it's terribly important. No, I've got to speak to him personally, I... Uh... Midnight. Hello? Will you get him for me? There's no time left and... Uh... Never mind. I'll tell you. It's... It's about... <gasps> There was a girl with him when he left my gas station. She ought to be around. Where's the light? Here. There he is. On the floor. And he looks... He's dead, all right. No wonder. Look at that hole in his chest. Wait a minute. There's something funny here. That wound never bled. Huh? The only way that could happen is if he was dead before the bullet hit him. Two men staring at a corpse that is finally still. Still forever. The corpse of the man who died yesterday. While outside, somewhere in the night, the restless spirit keeps a rendezvous that none can avoid. And the distant clocks chime the last notes in epilogue for... Murder at David Hapgood was played by Stuart Brody. Vandell Kramer was Walt. With music by Charles Paul, Murder at Midnight was directed by Anton M. Leader.